you have that new army itch but don't want to buy, paint and build all those models yourself? Don't want to spend all that money? Have you ever wondered what it might be like to build up a tournament army from nothing? Well, in that case, here at 6++ we have the video series for you. You may have seen that Chris is starting up an Admech army and documenting the entire process. Well, I won't let Imperium have all the fun, so here is my video about what I'll be doing in From Great to Greatness. As Chris talks about in his video, there's typically three reasons why you'd want to start a new army. Firstly, it's usually the thing that attracts us quickly is the models. You'll go into Games Workshop or wherever you normally buy your models, you'll see them and you'll be instantly attracted to them. And that might be the thing that makes you start a new army. It certainly has been the case for me with some of my other armies, which you'll see a couple of models behind them. The other re or one of the other reasons you might want to do it is the, uh, is the lore. So lots of us, including myself, read a lot of the different books out there and dig into the Black Library and like to understand the purpose behind the motives of lots of the characters in 40k. But then the other and I guess more pressing reason for this video is the competitiveness of an army. Um, that's one of the things that will really, if you're, if you're into tournaments and you're trying to win games, that's one of the things that is going gonna, gonna to attract you no matter what. Now, if we look at the armies that I've already got, which are predominantly a Thousand Suns army, it's a Chaos Space Marines army, and it's a Zinch Demons army. So I originally started actually playing Tau a long time ago, uh, but decided that the playstyle wasn't for me. And I know that's actually something that Chris spoke about in his video, and he probably got a little bit of uh, input from me on that as well. Um, so I collected my Thousand Suns to start with, and that was because I really, really loved the way they looked, uh, particularly those new Rubric Marines. Um, but I also loved the, the tragedy of the lore around them as well, so they're sort of the bad guys, but they, they kind of didn't really mean to, and there's the whole uh, Magnus did nothing wrong type thing as well. And obviously the models are great. Um, naturally for me, lore-wise, it felt sensible to include some Zeke Demons in that as well, because obviously that is the, the patron god of the Thousand Suns. Uh, and then I decided that, you know, I, I was enjoying competing in all the phases, uh, but I also found that the model range of the Thousand Suns was quite limited. So I decided to um, expand with some Chaos Space Marines. I predominantly play Black Legion. Um, again, I like the lore of that as well. I loved the, uh, the Black Legion book and the, uh, the Town of Horus book in particular. I'm pretty sure that those set of books are responsible for a lot of Black Legion armies out there. Um, but what I found was that neither of those armies are actually especially uh, competitive. Um, and that's, that's sort of been the way for most of 8th edition and certainly in 9th. So the army I've decided to start collecting actually is Slaanesh Demons, which I know, I know before you jump out of your seats and say, you know, they're not a competitive army. Actually, they are posting up some pretty good results at the moment. Um, hard to say yet if that's going to continue because obviously we're in the early days of 9th, not much is actually being played at the moment. Um, but what I love about that, and coming back to the three points I said before, I think the models are fantastic. Uh, the new Keeper of Seekers model might be my favourite model in all of, all of Warhammer now, I think it's absolutely insane. Um, and also they've had quite a lot of re-sculpts on some of the other things as well, so I really like the, the new themes for instance as well. Lore-wise obviously it's incredibly rich, um, kind of from Slaanesh as well, obviously the, the God of Excess and obviously the Doom of the Eldar. Um, I obviously I have a friend on the channel who plays Eldar, so it's kind of a nice tie in there as well. Um, but also it's, it, I think the, the, the lore-wise of it is sometimes under-realized, I think that you've got the whole excess spectrum. So typically, you know, we, we know where that normally goes, but there's obviously lots of things that as well. So it's not just not just that, it's also things like having the most of anything. So having the most luxurious clothing, it's having the, the, the best food, it's having the best music, it's, it's everything around excess. And I think that you can make an army that sort of plays on that quite nicely. Um, and some of the models even lend themselves to that. A little bit so if you look at things like the uh, contorted epitome which is obviously a mirror a mesmerizing mirror i guess there's a play on beauty there and there's also the infernal and rapturous which is uh, an absolutely insane model of the uh, the harp that's sort of made out of a, a corpse which is uh, which is fantastic play style wise um, so there are some differences in the slash force than in all my other forces, so I typically play, if I'm playing my Thousand Suns, they're, they're not particularly fast. So I, I, they're, they're reasonably durable, although quite expensive, um, but they don't really get around the board. Um, similarly, when I play my Black Legion, I tend to focus on Obliterators and Terminators, because I think they're just they're, they're the models I like to use the most. Again, incredibly slow, so I'm looking for something that's a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot quicker around the board to grab those objectives, um, and also a little bit of punch as well. I've never been too much into the gunline army, so I do like do like hard hitting combat units, um, and also they do have quite a strong cycle phase as well. And arguably the powers are um, 
a lot better than some of the Zooch ones. I also like how they have quite a lot of different tricks uh, available to them, so they have some great relics. Um, Forbidden Gem is one that's always spoken about, um, which allows you to turn off a character aura, which is, which is great. Um, but they also have things that stop units from being able to fall back. Um, and also debuff their leadership as well, which is, is, is now more useful when you're trying to stop things from falling back. Um, so I think it'll be quite different and certainly a challenge, um, but I'm really looking forward to getting involved. First and foremost, uh, for the video series, I will need to be deciding on what the core of my army is going to be. Um, this is usually maybe half the points that you think, okay, well, th that's something that's reliable. I'm going to want to use it in every game um, that makes sense to build the rest of the army around. So when I say core, I mean that literally, that what can what are the core features that my army needs to be able to do so it can actually function. So over the next few days, weeks, I'll be thinking about that. And I kind of already have, I have some ideas that I'll share with you guys uh, once they're a little bit more fleshed out. As I mentioned, I'm looking for fast units, I'm looking for deadly units. Um, so I, I know that there are, um, there's a lot of T3, there's a lot of strength 3, um, so there's, there's got to be ways I need to figure out to make it so I can use them, get them, get the things into combat quickly, and actually make them do something when they get there and not just bounce back off wherever they were trying to hit. One of the things I know that Chris will be talking about in his video is the way to go around actually creating the army, and that is the, the acquisition, I guess, of all the different parts. Now that's not something I'm going to talk about too much, um, but one thing I will touch upon is the way that I started this army, which was actually to buy the uh, Sonesh half of the Shadow and Pain box set. Um, typically, these box sets are a really great way to um, save a bit of money and actually get quite a lot of models for that money as well. So if you want those models, those are good deals. Obviously, you have to check to make sure you're not just buying a box set and then never use the pieces inside. For me, I know I'm going to need the 10 Demonettes. Um, I really want to use the, the Seekers. I think, as I mentioned before, I want those fast, hard-hitting units. Um, and those ones really do fall into the fast category um, with some of the rules that they have. Um, I also quite like the new Lord of Pain model. Um, I don't know what I'll use him for yet. Probably be some kind of Herald, um, unless of course when the Demon's Codex eventually comes out, it will be uh, he'll have his own rules. Who knows? Um, that comes with the Chariot as well. I'm not really convinced by those, um, so I might hold on to that for a little while. But then obviously the other thing you can do with these box sets is if you realise you don't actually want the models, is to just sell it. Um, we keep some of that money and put it back where you need it. One thing I really do want some help from you guys is deciding on the colour scheme. So if as you look at the models behind me and any others you see in my battle reports, what you'll see is it's typically box art. I'm not especially creative when it comes to new ideas, um, but I would really love to maybe do something a little bit different this time. Um, so if you, if anyone has any suggestions, please do let me know. Uh, ideally with some kind of, some kind of reference or uh, some pictures to support it, just to give me a, a mental picture of what it is we're talking about. Um, but yeah, that would be really appreciated. In future videos, I'll, once I've actually gotten most of the army together, I'll be sort of, as I paint it, I'll give some painting updates and some build updates. And as we get closer to being actually being able to use the armies, of course, then we can start to talk about tactics and how we've built them and everything like that. And then once we've got that sort of core ready, I think we'll end up having a couple of smaller games to just try and figure out what's missing. So if we if we play a couple of smaller games, and I think, you know, I'm really missing some objective secured, then I think, okay, well, maybe I need some more demonettes. Or if I'm really not hitting hard enough, maybe I do need that third keeper of secrets that I hadn't planned for originally. Although, to be honest, I probably will have three to begin with. Um, as I said, they're incredible models, so. And of course, to help me build the list and everything around it, I, I will be looking at what's actually performing well, sort of globally, for uh, slash armies. And that's not to say that you have to look at what's working in, in other countries and, and copy that yourself, because generally that won't work because that's not the people that you're going to be playing against in your area or even or maybe not even your country. Uh, but I do think it's a good place to start and figure out what, what definitely doesn't work um, and what definitely is working generally in the world, because that gives you an idea of what maybe the good places to start are. If you're seeing, for instance, that almost every Sinesh list has a consulted epitome in it, there's probably a chance it's quite good. Um, and I would agree with that. Beyond this, of course, the eventual goal is to be playing, you know, those competitive 2,000 point games, um, which we will do, I guess, firstly on the channel, uh, when we're able to. Um, obviously, there's, it's quite nice now, we obviously have a little lockdown project to keep us sane whilst, uh, whilst we're waiting for things to come back to a little bit of normality. Um, so we'll have those competitive games for the channel, and obviously we'll use those as learning experiences. But then beyond that, the eventual goal is obviously to take them to events and, you know, take it from grey to greatness. I mean, hopefully, I, I think I think Chris is quite confident in getting some results with his Admec army. Um, I hope to be able to do the same with the Slanesh. I know that they are posting good results um, elsewhere in the world at the moment, but as I've said, it's, it's early in the edition. We haven't seen all the codexes yet. 
Um, so time will tell what's going to work. But yeah, stay with us, guys. It's going to be a great ride. And um, any suggestions, ideas, tips you want to give me as a as a starting point, please do share them. Cheers, guys.